Unreal Engine 5 is out. You can download it. It's in early access. You can download a sample project and really check out a lot of the cool tech that's happening with it. But probably the more pressing question is, does this really change your workflow? Um, and second to that is, do you have to relearn the engine? So that's what we're going to cover today in this video. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first question, and probably the most important, is with UE5, do you have to relearn the engine? The short answer is no. In fact, um, all of the, the tools and uh, even some of the, the workflow that we're predominantly used to with Unreal Engine 4 still apply. In fact, it's still there. Um, just to give you an idea, so um, I docked my content browser, but we still have. We go under window, we've got our content browsers. We can do multiples. In fact, our window is exactly the same. We can access a lot of the exact same tools in here. Um, if anything, this is more just kind of a UI refresh on top of it. Now, one thing that is slightly different, but again is there, is that you'll notice that we now have these create buttons, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but you can even, if I, if I do our place actors app, you can see that I start to get something very similar feeling to what UE4 was. So the short answer is without going panel by panel, um, all of the uh, controls, parameters, and everything that we've had before in Unreal Engine 4, all of it exists. It's all still there. And in fact, for the most part, Outside of just kind of the visual refresh, nothing has really changed that much. All right, let's go to uh, point number two, which is, does this change my workflow? Not really. Um, importing your objects, creating your objects, manipulating them, uh, making adjustments, etc. All that is pretty much the same. Um, in fact, if I go into here and just select an object, you can see that I've got my details panel. I can scroll down. All of that is exactly the same. Now, the two biggest additions to Unreal Engine 5, which are huge, is Nanite and Lumen. Nanite being the system that kind of processes geometry at extremely high detail, and Lumen being this realistic lighting uh, that we have that is just kind of just works out of the box. Um, it is literally a proverbial easy button. Um, now, with that being said, um, going back to the thing about does this change your workflow uh, with Nanite and Lumen, um, I think it's best to kind of um, approach these as more like they are shortcuts. Uh, what that means is that you're still going to have to place some lights. You're still going to have to import geometry. However, a lot of the um, kind of post systems that you have to do, for example, build your lighting to go into light mass and stuff. A lot of that gets kind of um, erased when working with uh, Nanite and Lumen. So with that, just think that you still have to kind of go through a similar workflow, uh, but Nanite and Lumen just help you get there a lot faster. All right, uh, which kind of goes to the, the third question is, you know, can I still use real-time ray tracing? Um, technically, yes. Um, while, you know, there is there are options inside of Unreal Engine 5 for both lighting and reflections to be able to switch between, um, you know, traditional Lumen or real-time ray tracing, Lumen is technically designed to replace real-time ray tracing. Um, so something again to note here is that you can actually selectively toggle between Lumen and real-time ray tracing in both the project settings and your post-processing volumes. All right, all right, let's go. Number four, Nanite. Okay, this is cool, this is awesome. Now I can import my ZBrush models. Technically, yes, you can. Um, however, there, there are some considerations to keep in mind. Um, one of the really cool features about Nanite is that it can process um, extremely high density meshes um, and a lot of them. Um, so uh, in the scene here, this is the uh, the Valley of the Ancient, which is the, um, uh, the example project you can download. I mean, you can see if I go down to this rock level, I mean, we have um, amazing fidelity here. In fact, the the near clipping plane actually um, hits before I can even get down to this level. So um, the scene itself, I mean, if you were to go down to, you know, how many tries and stuff, I have no clue. It's it's ridiculous. Um, but uh, something uh, that you should keep in mind here is that uh, for Nanite to really work uh, as best as you can, a couple things to keep in mind. Now, the uh, first thing is, is this idea that um, in order to take advantage of the Nanite system, uh, when you import your static meshes, so your objects into your scene, uh, there is a new checkbox inside of that import setting, which is, says convert to Nanite. Um, so what is happening is underneath the hood, Nanite is basically a system and an algorithm for crunching this massive data set of information of triangles, polygons, etc. And it does it without you really needing to interact with it. Um, so again, that is the easy checkbox of just go ahead and say, make sure your static mesh 
will convert to Nanite. Now, if you have a scene already set up, and say, for example, you're converting a scene from UE4 to UE5, um, or you just forgot to check that box in the import setting, you can go into any of your static meshes and just check that box that says um, use with Nanite. Um, now, uh, a couple things to keep in mind. When do you want to use Nanite as opposed to just using a static mesh? Um, if uh, the, the mesh itself contains a lot of triangles um, or it's going to be very, very small on screen, so you've got a higher density of polygons and a smaller kind of pixel area. Um, if you have many instances of the same thing in the scene um, or if it acts as like a major occluder of other nanite geometry. So if we kind of look over here, you can see we've got kind of our, um, um, our, our, our quixel scan um, geometry over here, which is occluding quite a bit. So that could be a use case where... Um, nanite would be very good for that. Uh, now something else to take note of with Nanite that slightly does change your workflow. Uh, nanite handles all of the level of detail automatically. Uh, traditionally, if you're familiar with the way LODs work, uh, traditionally you have very distinct states. Um, so you'd have your base model, your lowest LOD, and then you'd have another one that's a little bit lower res, et cetera, et cetera. Nanite handles that differently, and this is why kind of the, when you check the box, you don't get to go in there and tweak it too much. Uh, Nanite actually handles, and the way that it processes this, this density of meshes is in clusters, is the easiest way to think about it. So you don't really have to go in and create LODs. Nanite does it automatically, um, which is beautiful, and it does a great job, and it's almost imperceptible when you start going in and out of your draw distances. Um, uh, another point about Nanite, too, is there. there's probably this conception that if you're importing uh, geometry, so in fact, when, we, when the, the community saw... UE5 kind of demo for the first time um, and you know it was the kind of showcasing uh, same character that we have on on screen here um, when uh, when you you know it kind of revealed this big open temple and you had basically ZBrush sculpts and you had I think it was like 50 or 500 of them I can't remember exactly um, but the whole concept one of the one of the biggest questions that raised there was okay does this dramatically increase my packaging size because I'm basically you know, putting in a ZBrush mess. No, um, it isn't. This is the first thing that, you know, I think is really important to understand about Nanite is even though your visual fidelity um, is substantially higher than it has ever really been in the past, um, one of the really cool things about the Nanite system is that it's able to compress this information down pretty heavily. In fact, uh, to kind of quote from the documentation right now, uh, because of the micro detail that Nanite is able to achieve, it's assumed that it means it's a larger increase in geometry data resulting in larger game package sizes. Um, however, that's really not the fact. In fact, Nanite's mesh format is significantly smaller than the standard static mesh format because of Nanite's specialized mesh encoding. Um, uh, I, one of the things I thought was really interesting about an example here is that a 1.5 million triangle Nanite mesh can uh, look both better um, and be smaller in terms of packaging size than a low poly mesh with a 4K normal map. Um, so that one is a huge change to workflow because now that you're increasing your mesh sizes, your information there, it's important, again, that you check that Nanite checkbox, um, and now you may actually be able to drop your GPU calls because you're not having to compress normal maps out too much, or you've got you know, you know your, your polygon mesh, which means you may not have to run ultra, ultra high normal map. So something to keep in mind, um, uh, professional tip I'll tell you guys on this one is you'll still need to make sure that you profile um, and run like your size map and your size audits to make sure that the final output hits with your, um, your, your target hardware. Um, okay, so bringing me to point number five, um, kind of breaking this down by industry. First question kind of being, what is the impact on game development, specifically for creating games for platforms like PC, uh, consoles, etc.? Um, in short, you can achieve amazing results in a shorter amount of time. Uh, kind of going back to what I said that you know, Lumina Nanite are kind of shortcuts to getting to a uh, you know visual fidelity or information being processed in the engine much faster than we have before in the past. Um, however, you know, still be mindful that you need to uh, you need to be cognizant of all the normal stuff, right? Your packaging size, your target hardware limitations, uh, your texture memory, um, etc. Um, again, the, the, the beautiful part about this, especially for game development, is that Unreal Engine is doing all of the heavy lifting, which means you get to focus more on the experience, the story, the look, the visuals, the fidelity, um, etc. So that is, that's awesome. Um, and especially with Lumen now too, um, you're really, 
you aren't boxed in like you have been in the past with limited hardware support with real-time ray tracing. For example, real-time ray tracing really works on Series 2 and Series 3 cards from NVIDIA, AMD, kind of the equivalent on that. Well, now with Unreal Engine 5, you aren't locked down to having to use real-time ray tracing. In fact, it will just work, which is, which is crazy. Um, one of the other things too, which is great, is no more light baking. Um, if you've ever had to do large maps or anything, or you know, try to do production and having to click that build lighting, um, that's always kind of been a pain. Now it just does it, um, which is which is awesome. All right, so point number six, kind of sticking with our industries here, what is the impact on ArcViz? So where you know you really want the best fidelity, you're not super concerned with having to achieve 60, 90, 120 frames a second. Uh, Biggest thing, first and foremost, is the workflow boost. Um, so what we're talking about here is less parameters to adjust, right? In the past, you may have had to do uh, certain lighting, but say, for example, you know, uh, you're working like an interior, um, the apartment one always sounds kind of, you know, an apartment scene or something. So you have a, a big window, light is streaming in. Uh, traditionally, in the past, you could go to bake lighting, but sometimes you would get dark spots in the room um, and you'd have to kind of go in there and do boost. Uh, filler lights, you'd have to do kind of kicker lights and stuff uh, to really get that balance. Well, now with with Lumen in particular, you can drop that directional light, have it stream in a window, um, and using just the slider of intensity or the indirect lighting uh, intensity itself. So you're talking two sliders now. Uh, you can literally light that entire scene. In fact, if there's you know adjacent rooms, light will spill into there as well. So um, absolutely. Um, a, a huge time saver and less having to adjust a lot of parameters. Um, now something else too, whereas in the past, uh, Datasmith uh, really helped to ingest volumes of information. So if you ever use that workflow coming from, you know, like a CAD DCC program to import it into Unreal, uh, Datasmith is a great interchange there. Now, it doesn't mean that Datasmith is going away. In fact, it's still completely 100% applicable. Uh, but in the situation with ArcViz, uh, one of the things that it helps out a lot is that with Neonite in particular, uh, you don't really have to try to compress things or get things exactly perfect or have to worry about that. Nanite JCB says, I got you, bro. Um, go ahead and just, you know, pump the information that you need. It will handle in all the LODs, et cetera. So again, you don't have to worry too much about the optimization step in it to get it to function really well. Um, and kind of last thing, kind of sticking with the ArcViz stuff, is, you know, on your your smaller scenes, especially those with, um, uh, you know, like like fewer meshes, uh, Nanite automatically handling the LODs um, is great. With Lumen automatically handling it, you can literally just focus on framing that scene and making it look beautiful. All right, uh, kind of going uh, number seven out here too, which is what is the impact on product viz? Um, honestly, the pretty much the exact same benefits that we're seeing with game development, and we're also seeing with arc viz apply to product viz. Um, so very very self explanatory there. Um, and then finally, kind of last thing I want to hit is um, uh, what is the impact on virtual production? Um, Visually speaking, I, I, I feel like some of the things are immediately the, well, duh, this makes sense. Uh, but to kind of break it down, again, we have fewer parameters that we have to mess with, right? Like we can drop in literally just a sunlight, angle it, adjust the intensity and the indirect lighting intensity, and the entire scene is completely lit, including the ambient bounce in there, which is incredible. Um, this also means with Lumen and the way that light is interacting behind the scenes, we get a much more physically accurate representation of that lighting, which again is going to get us closer and truer to how light would respond in the real world, which you know now means your virtual sets are going to look that much better. Um, uh, another thing here too, especially with uh, Nanite, is that it means that we have less reliance on LODs and other kind of performance um, adjustments that we can make in the engine uh, to achieve, you know, typically if you're gonna be doing like 24 frames a second or higher, depending on what your in, uh, in frame capture, in camera capture frames per second is. So from that, I mean, you're talking about, now we're seeing uh, better lit stages and we can pump a lot more information into this scene, which now means that 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 uh, that kind of digital divide where we see, oh, this is digital, this is not, is probably going to dissipate extremely quickly if it hasn't already. Um, so, with that being said, um, hopefully this is, this dispels some myths. Again, I think the biggest thing that um, I do want to reinforce in this video in particular is that all the information, all the workflow that you've been learning up to this point with UE4. 
absolutely 100% completely applies to working in Unreal Engine 5. In fact, you'll find a lot of the same windows, controls, and panels, everything exactly where they were in Unreal Engine 4, just reskinned uh, slightly different. Um, and then the second thing with this too is to understand that with Lumen and Nanite, again, the, the two biggest things kind of um, immediately that we can see with the engine, um, they don't necessarily replace anything. They're not going to they're not going to nix out having lighting artists or anything that no, no, that's that's still completely applicable. Again, this is just a tool. The most important thing is that, you know, a tool doesn't tell a story artists do. Um, and so with that, um, you just now have a faster way of getting from the idea to implementation, which is incredible. So um, it's going to be exciting, especially to see some of the other things that I know are slated for Unreal Engine 5 start to come out as the tech is being built and stuff like that. Um, but it is an amazing tool. It is a game changer. Um, no pun intended on that one. Um, and super excited to see kind of a lot of the cool things that come out of being able to use this tech. I know myself personally, I'm really enjoying and have been enjoying working in it. So uh, that will kind of cover this uh, with kind of the UE4 to UE5 workflow. Uh, so I hope this helps. So uh, stay safe out there. We'll see you guys in the next one.